Hi folks, Fusion 360 chamfers. What's the secret, what's the formula to getting Fusion to automatically offset the chamfer tool so that you can maximize your chamfer and cut the best area of the chamfer tool? Let's walk through how to do that. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So again, task at hand is wanting to put a 2D chamfer around that edge. By using the chamfer tip offset in Fusion, I'm able to control where that tool cuts, and that lets me move the cut up to the top of the tool, which is really important on a part like this, because I want the chamfer to start all the way back here, and the closer to the nominal shank diameter of the tool that I'm cutting, the better off we're going to be, because that chamfer is going to start all the way closer back. However, there's a trade-off, and raise your hand if you've ever ruined a part by a mistaken setting or gouge when you're at the very end trying to do a CNC machine chamfer. So shout out to Tim Paul. He's an Autodesk employee, a solid machinist. He has shared a ton of information out there, and this is actually where I saw that in one of his CAM files. So what's the formula? What's the secret? Underpasses, chamfer tip offset. This looks like it's a hard-coded value. It's not. Right click, edit expression, there is the holy grail. Card here to the NYC CNC website, you can copy and paste this into Fusion. Let's walk through what it is, it's easier than you think. Here's that same formula, again let's break it down. So what's our tool diameter? Today I'm using a quarter inch tool. What's my tool tip diameter? For most of the chamfer tools we've got here at Saunders Machine Works, they're zero. What do I mean by that? We go look at our trusty mill drill end mill. The tip comes to a sharp point. There are chamfer tools that don't come to a sharp point. Take for example this 5 8 inch chamfer tool from Lakeshore. You can see there's a flat spot on the tip and sure enough they even call it out as the tip diameter 1 8 of an inch. Again though for us 0 divided by 2. So first formula is parentheses tool diameter minus tool tip diameter and parentheses divided by 2 eighth of an inch, not exactly rocket science yet. Chamfer width. This is part of the secret sauce of this formula, is Fusion is able to use these sort of parametric cam or dynamic cam to look at what you're actually choosing as your chamfer width, and that's what makes this actually work. As you update this value, it updates your offset. That's cool. Here we've got 5 thou, 0 0.005, and then this is just a cushion. You don't actually want to cut right where the angle meets the nominal shank because it's very likely going to raise a burr. So formula ends up being that divided by two amount minus this minus that. It's 115. Now if you're looking at me and you're saying, well Saunders, I could have calculated that in my head. Sure you could have, but the difference is that this formula is dynamic. So if I come in here and I change this tool, let's say we've got to use a 3 8 inch tool for some reason, and we change it to 3 8 or you're just setting up a template in Fusion, which is an amazing thing to use. This becomes dynamic for that. And as we update that 3 8 inch tool, it updates the chamfer tip offset, and it keeps it. I've got a funny looking chamfer tool now, but nevertheless, that's the point. It keeps it safe so that you can chamfer here without gouging your part. The last value, which I'm not using here, is chamfer clearance. I don't really understand why people set this very much higher. Say you did 10 thou, just to demonstrate it. In our experience, that value can be really pretty small. I had it at 1 thou. That tends to, when I gouge apart or make a mistake with chamfering, that's not what caused it. That's going to push that toolpath out just a hair, which gives you, again, the 10 thou clearance between the nearest solid model geometry and your tool. So Fusion's looking for that collision detection. What's cool is to compare how much better your part can look with that chamfer. Our normal chamfer settings would have meant that the chamfer tool started out here. Now notice, the funny thing is that I still looks like I'm a really close to colliding. I'm not, but the problem is that I've got all this unchamfered sharp edge right here. By pushing that chamfer offset over, we're able to start that chamfer incredibly far back along the part. That's cool. Once you've got that nailed down, you're going to want to right click, store as template, and call it your close chamfer. Now anytime you've got a new part, you can come in here, let's say we want to chamfer this edge right here. New setup, right click, create from template, close chamfer, 
I'll edit that and all I've got to do is pick that geometry, click OK, and I'm done. I've got that toolpath down. And really what I like about it isn't that the toolpath is done, it's that I'm going to trust that toolpath. If you're looking to learn more about Fusion 360, whether it's tutorials, helps, or just pushing your skill sets, check out the video tutorials and content over at NYC CNC, as well as the library where we've got all sorts of content on CNC, machining, and manufacturing entrepreneurship. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you next Friday.